Hey, Chris Lipe here. Lots of you have been requesting a breakdown of Joe Duplanchier's voice from Gojira. I have not listened to Gojira before. Uh, I have not seen this video that we're about to go through. Here is The Art of Dying live, but this is going to be a first for me. Usually I will go through and study a person's voice and figure out things in my own voice and show you guys how to get certain sensations so that you can get close to what they're doing and hopefully it influences your own singing. This time, that's not what I'm doing. I'm still going to experiment with my own voice based on what he's doing, but I don't know what to expect. I don't know if I'm going to be able to jive with it right off because I haven't done my normal rehearsal sorts of things going into this. If you like this sort of thing, simultaneously digging into someone else's voice and seeing what it means, feeling out what it means for your own voice, you'll love my course, The Aggressive Vocalist's Master Plan of Attack. I go over screaming, lows, highs. Aggressive mixed voice. Click the link below for more information on that if you want to check it out. By the way, I'm doing a reaction to the live version of this song as opposed to the studio because I feel like a lot of the time we can get a better auditory picture of their vocal technique and what they actually do because it's not buried in production. So I really want to get a good uh, vantage point to his approach as a vocalist. And live is the best way to do that. I've learned more from studying artists live than I've learned from studying them in the studio. Unless I have the isolated vocal track, then it's really fun to, to do that. By the way, I have to stop the video at regular increments in order to not get the video taken down due to copyright reasons. So that's why I stop. Some, sometimes why I stop and say something is to break that up and allow the video to remain up. That's some hard hitting stuff and those lights are already causing problems in my head. That's some low growling, that's cool. Um, we'll unpack it as we as I hear more of it. Okay. Right off the bat, I want to make an observation. There is tone in those growls. There is pitch there. He has primary chord engagement and he's laying false chord engagement over the top. This is very key. A lot of times, aggressive singers want to lean into what people think of as the fry scream, which is a... Uh, you don't have the, the, the tone, you don't have the note in there. Uh, some people would consider this to be a voiceless sort of scream. This is not fry screaming, as a lot of people would say. And I don't like that term anyway. I also don't like the term false chord scream because all compression-based grit, all screaming, all aggressive, distortive, distorted singing is false chord engagement. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's hone in. I'm gonna use the phrase, close my eyes. Close my eyes! That's the note. If you listen carefully, 
to what's going on. That note is buried in there. Close my eyes and... The best way to develop a wonderful sounding, deep, tony scream or growl is to start clean and build it. So that's what we're gonna do here. Close my eyes and... I realize it sounds absolutely nothing like what he's doing, but we wanna get those pitches in our mind. Close my eyes and... Now, I'm gonna add compression to this sound. Close! I'm gonna lift something heavy. Close! 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 I'm holding back air and I'm pushing more from my primary support. Close my eyes in! I'm also gonna lengthen my mouth. Close! Like he's doing. Now, there's still a lot more note there. You, you hear a bit of grit. I'm going to do more of that. So I'm going to hold back more air. Close my eyes. There it is. I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth with it. Close my eyes and close my eyes. And. It's actually not a lot louder because I'm holding back the air and I'm actually giving my primary chords a break, which is the only reason I can still talk after I do that. This isn't just pushing your vocal cords harder and harder. It's learning how to moderate the airflow. So close my eyes in. There we go. Now I'm going to, I'm going to compress as much as possible and then I'm going to let it fall apart. Here's what I mean. Close. I'm going to simultaneously compress and let it fall apart like that. I'm going to I'm going to invoke my vocal break. This is going to allow more air to pass through my primary chords without engaging them for just very small moments. Close. Hear how much thicker it gets? Close. Leaning into that break while simultaneously combining the compression idea, lengthening, lowering my larynx. Close my eyes and, close. and let yourself crack as you're dialing it in. This is where you have to go in order to get this sound. Now, there are guys that are a lot better at it than me, and I've worked with them. Spencer Sotelo from Periphery, Lucas Magyar from Vale of Maya. And let's get one more of those lows just to create that, uh, that real nice wide image. Never again I will remember your mouth and so your word on life. I'll serve your remains. Awesome. Both I've done courses with. I've left the link to that below as well. But this idea of adding compression over a clean note, going to the point of breakup, and then letting it fall apart and leaning into that falling apart is how you get there. These guys have the muscle memory down so they can do it like this. There's a lot of air being used the lower you go and the more you lean into that falling apart. All right, let's move on. Keep this approach in mind as we listen to the other things that he does. Zeroing in on those pitches, layering it over the top, 
compressing, invoking that vocal break. He's very good at doing that all over his range. Very hard to do it low. Easier for me, at least, to do it high, let it break up, but still having that little bit of pitch in there, that's what keeps things interesting. I'm going to use the phrase, take my life. I'm going to lengthen. Take my life! Take my life! I'm also going to put my tongue back and almost pronounce an R, R. So I'm, I'm placing the resonance back to get it lower sounding, even though the pitch isn't changing. Take my Notice how low his larynx is, but also how how dropped his jaw is. That's helping him get that super low sound. A lot of pitching, if we take the note consideration out of there, a lot of pitching those really low sounds is being able to have this drawn posture with your face and tongue. It, it's huge. Notice there again, he he invoked that R, putting the tongue back and lowering that pitch as much as you can and then sighing from that vocal break like we talked about earlier. These guys know how to lay down a groove. Obviously, I skipped over some of the instrumental sections to trim down the overall length of the video and really hone in on the vocals, but I love the simplicity of their riffs. Certainly, there's some pounding rhythms, but the fact that things are, are more lurchy, this, also, this almost harkens back to the, the simplicity of some of the grunge uh, or 90s sort of uh, vibes combined with a more metal approach. I really like it. I'm going to check out more. Again, if you'd like more help with your voice, particularly your aggressive singing, go follow the link below and check out my The Aggressive Vocalist's Master Plan of Attack, and I'll help you develop some of the things we touched on in this particular video. And please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for suggestions. I get to discover new music and figure new things out. Please leave comments below and suggest more for me to do. We'll see you later.